Hi, my name is Brian and today I'm going to review a smart switch that I bought on Amazon. It's made by a company called Hotoo, that's H-O-O-T-O-O. And uh, they're a Chinese company and this, it, you use an app called eHouse um, to control it from your smartphone. I've got an iPhone so I've used it with that. Um, the app's really junk, it's very poorly written. Um, and the switch isn't much better. In fact, I couldn't get it working right, um, and when I ran Wireshark on it, it uh, it sends out a DHCP discover. My router responds with a with an offer, and it never requests the address, so it can never get registered on my on my uh, network. Um, I'm running a, a a Cisco router on my network, so it's probably not my router that's defective. Um, and so I decided to do what the best thing you can do with a piece of equipment that's not working take it apart and see how it works so there are you need um, a security screw with two prongs and i'll just hold this under my close-up camera and there's two screws located here and here um, and you take those out and then this is held together uh, actually it's a little bit loose but it it wouldn't come apart so i took in fact i'll just put it back together you know, you can't pull it apart due to the way it's assembled. It snaps in. But if you take a hammer, you can whack it apart. One or two whacks is all you need. And that loosens the case and causes it to pop out, at which point you can get inside and see how it's made. So, um, I'm pretty sure that if it had a warranty, I voided it. No big deal. It didn't work. Um, you know, and I want to talk a moment about the price point because to sell this for $9.99 on Amazon, Amazon's taken somewhere around a quarter of that. And um, shipping takes another, say, 20%. So that means they're getting $5 in revenue for this. There is no way you can make this for $5. But nonetheless, I, I, I digress. So it has a USB charging port that's rated for one amp. And it can switch on and off 110 volt uh, power. Um, I suspect this is a multi um, voltage uh, arrangement and that they probably make one of these for other countries. Um, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. It uses a 16 amp 240 volt relay that switches the hot leg of the power. So the ground comes in and it's a pass through from the back to the, to the, the um, outlet side. And um, that ties to the high voltage board so there's this is the high voltage board here and then there's a low voltage uh, and computer board the ground is just a straight pass through with no tie to the device so it's a you know for better or worse um, it's probably a floating ground and then um, the hot leg comes in and it's picked up on this piece of wire here and brought to the board and then there's a return that goes to the other side of it so they split the hot leg and um, it is not a UL listed device, um, but they attempt to provide some safety here um, with uh, what looks like a little bit of a fusible link. Um, one of the things I thought was interesting is this, was, this device is fairly warm when it's plugged in. So when I took it apart, I instantly realized why. It, it has a magnetic uh, transformer. And so this is what I call an old school power supply. And it's, it generates a lot of heat wastes a lot of energy probably 20 30 watts constant draw and they're producing at least a 5 volt and a 3.3 volt out of this um, power supply configuration with all these transformers i mean all these capacitors um, one thing they did do that i like is they put sealant or caulk of some sort around the base of several of the devices um, and this, this looks to be like a silicone you know, like a just silicon sealant. Um, but that stops corrosion and it stops um, arcing and all sorts of other issues that come with it. Um, the, um, so, you know, let's get to the part we're really interested in, which is what is this computer? Now, it's in here loose, so it didn't come out that easy. But um, what they've done is they've got a computer board and a high voltage board, and um, it's kind of interesting. They're using a MediaTek. Um, 7688AN, 
which is a uh, system on a chip uh, targeted for Internet of Things. Um, retails for about $13, so I don't know what kind of volume discount you can get, but I, again, I have a real hard time understanding how they can sell it in the United States um, for $5. Um, so it is uh, 2.4 um, it's, it's actually a pretty hefty little chip. It's 2.4 uh, gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi compatible. It is B, G, and N. Um, it runs at 580 uh, megahertz, um, and um, it has. Uh, it's a 16-bit device with apparently two gigs of RAM, which is really just stunning. Um, but uh, and it can actually support. Um, well, see, this doesn't make any sense. It says two gigabytes at 193 megahertz. There ain't no way. It's got to be two megs. It's just got to be. There's just no way they've got two gigs of RAM on this thing. So anyway, um, it will come up in access point mode by default. You connect to it with a, a an app or a web browser or SSH, and you can reconfigure it, and then it'll connect to your Wi-Fi. Um, it is OpenWRT compatible, but I have not taken the time to figure out how to hack this thing and reprogram it. Um, but the fact that this chip is very much compatible with BusyBox and other flavors of Linux means that there's a lot of potential for hacking if you just want something to play with. Um, I would not buy this you know, for an Internet of Things device in your house. It's junk. The, the app is buggy. It's poor, it, very poor English. Um, there is no help for it. and um, they do have support. They'll, they'll send you some broken English instructions. So there are a whole bunch of um, electrically conductive points on this board, which I, I suspect are for in-system programming. I just don't know which ones are what. Um, the, um, this chip is rated for Ethernet, so very likely some combination of these things is an Ethernet jack. Um, for connecting to this device and reprogramming it. Um, but uh, at, at any rate, um, you know, if you if you want something to play with, yeah, it's worth ten bucks to take it apart and see how it works. Um, don't plug it in while you're working on it. Sometimes Amazon's A-L-E-X-A -E likes to chime in on my videos, and it just did now. I don't know what I said. They got it, got it excited. But we're not going to mention its name. I'd like to rename that thing Satan. Then we could say things like, Satan, set the temperature on the house to 70 degrees. And that would certainly be a better name for it, considering Amazon's philosophy and getting money out of you. Anyway, so... Um, it has this interesting little antenna on it. Um, you know, this is a really primitive approach to a system on a chip um, controlling something, Internet of Things. I think uh, a D1 Mini um, Wemos would be a heck of a lot better device um, to, to do this kind of thing. And, and that's one of my future projects. So I hope you found my video entertaining and interesting. If you're looking for information on the Hutu, um, Again, it's a 16 amp, 240 volt rated uh, relay. You know, it's Chinese relay, Chinese ratings. I wouldn't run more than four amps at 110 volts through it. And, um, you know, the wiring's definitely undersized for 15 amp. Um, and uh, I, I'd be shocked if the traces were sized appropriately as well, just based on what I'm looking at. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed my video, um, and if I have time to mess with this and get anywhere with it, I will let you know.